Greetings. In this video, we're going to discuss invoicing within the Realtrack Performance ERP system. Let's take a second and go over what we're going to accomplish in this video. First, we will discuss a very basic invoice. We'll take a look at a job, make sure the job has completed some pieces, they're sitting in our inventory waiting for us to ship, and we're ready to invoice our customer. Then we'll build our invoice and ship our goods. Next, we'll take a look at a more complex example. Maybe there are several different goods sitting in inventory that we want to ship to our customer. And we'll also add some goods that we don't necessarily keep in inventory to the invoice before we ship it. After that, we'll take a look at what happens when we make mistakes or errors happen. Either when we catch a billing or quantity error on the invoice before we ship it out, and also how to handle the creation of a credit memo for one of our customers. All right, let's dive on in. I'm working away at my desk here and realize it's time to ship out some parts to my customer and invoice them for my work. So in this scenario, my first stop is to check out the job itself and make sure we're ready to go. I open my job group, find my job, and check out some information. The quantity complete and quantity available values on my interface tell me that my employees on the shop floor have completed so many units and that I have some available still in inventory to ship out to my customer. Since I have enough units to complete this partial shipment I'm working on, I won't have to worry about creating what Realtrack refers to as virtual inventory. We'll talk about virtual inventory a little more later. I know I'm ready, so I pop over to the invoice tab on my job group here and start building my invoice and packing list. I'll click my new invoice button, which provides me with a new invoice number. I now have the option of changing my basic invoice information, such as selecting a different billing, or shipping address, along with setting the terms and conditions for this invoice. One thing to note is that since we're within a specific job, Realtrack already knows the part or item you're shipping on this invoice. You can see here that the system has pre-filled that information out on this line. A little bit later, when we create an invoice from within the invoice group, this first line will be blank. We don't know exactly what you're shipping yet. I'll point that out when we cross that bridge in a minute. Probably the most important step is telling the invoice how many units you are shipping and invoicing for and then committing the invoice. I'll set my quantity to ship value here to two. If everything else looks kosher, I'm ready to commit my inventory. As we'll see in a second here, committing the inventory is important because it will help keep your inventory figures up to date and will also make sure to update your shipping schedules so that you never miss a shipment. After I click my commit inventory button, I see an optional confirmation page that gives me a rundown of how my invoice will look if I continue pulling from inventory. I'll approve of the plan and we'll be presented with our packing list inventory select interface. The top portion of this interface is designed to help us pull our parts from inventory. We will see all the lots for the part sitting here in our inventory. If we've made this part in previous jobs and still have some of those on our shelf, we're always free to pull those parts and ship them to our customer. The bottom half of this interface helps us rectify our shipping schedule. We need to tell the system which planned shipments this invoice is satisfying. If you're planning on shipping all of your units at one time, there's not much to do here in regards to the shipment schedule. But if your customer has asked for multiple shipments over a period of time, then filling this information out will be key to making sure your future shipments are timely and there are no missing shipments or issues. Once we click the Ship Items button, the Realtrack system pulls the items from inventory and will update the job shipment schedule to note the shipment we just processed. At this point, I'm free to print out my packing list and invoice reports, which I'll do here just to demonstrate the process. For this video, I'll be using our stock reports, which have no company logo or the like, but most likely you'll have the reports that have been easily customized with your logo and any other pertinent information such as ITAR statements or some terms and conditions. Before I fire off the report, I'd like to take a moment to point out the series of checkboxes on this invoice labeled print options. What these do is determine what information is added to the report when you print it off. Within the toolbox, you are able to set defaults of which bits you want to appear on reports by default, but within Realtrack, you can also customize these settings for each invoice. Whatever choices you make for this invoice will be saved specific to this invoice, and it will not affect any other invoice in your system. 
Also, if you have integrated Realtrack with a third-party accounting package, the values selected here will determine what information we pass to your accounting package. So, for example, if you choose to include the reference number, then when we post this invoice to your accounting package, the reference number will be included. Additionally, when you go to print the report, the reference number will also be on it. Now that we've printed our reports, let's take a quick trip back to our job order entry screen. As we see here, our quantity values along the bottom of the interface have been updated to note that while we still have the same number of units complete, our quantity available and quantity back order values have now been updated. All right, so that's our easiest and probably most common sort of occurrence for making an invoice for most Realtrack users. We do, however, have plenty of users that have slightly more advanced needs. Let's take a look at a situation where we need to send several different parts to the user all on the same invoice. Instead of going through the job group in this scenario, I'm going to open our invoice group, then switch over to my invoice tab and click the new invoice button to get the system to create a new blank invoice for me. Unlike when I created the invoice earlier, you will note that we don't yet have our customer, their information, nor any lines created for us automatically. We don't yet know all of those details. All right, so my first step is probably to tell the system whom I am shipping and invoicing. I can choose to either use the full customer name in this longer box or the customer code here in the shorter box to search for my customer. Once I have my customer selected, the system will choose the default build to and ship to addresses for that customer. But I'm always free to choose from any of the addresses defined for my customer. All right, so we're all set with our customer information. Now we need to get some parts and prices onto this invoice. You'll note that along the top of the invoice, we've got three tabs labeled customer selection, ship order selection, and inventory selection. If we've got multiple jobs for this customer and want to ship parts based on the open jobs for them, then we will click on the ship order selection tab. This will show us all the scheduled shipments for all open jobs for this customer. To say that another way, it doesn't matter what the part is, we just know this customer has multiple open jobs in our system and we want to ship all these different pieces together on one invoice. So when I click on this tab, you'll note we have a couple open jobs for our customer, and some of those jobs actually have multiple shipments scheduled as well. You'll note that as I check the boxes for the parts, Realtrack immediately adds them to the invoice. Once I've added the part to the invoice, I can adjust the number of units that we're shipping, along with adding the customer's PO information, changing our description, and adjusting the price if necessary. What happens if you want to ship something to this customer that isn't based on an open job? Either something that you previously made for them or another object you stock in your inventory. That's when we switch over to the inventory selection tab. You'll see as we click over to inventory selection, the bottom half of our screen stays the same. We can always see what we've already got on this invoice, regardless of whether we're looking at the customer selection, ship order selection, or inventory selection tabs. Anyways, let's pluck some goods out of our inventory and add them to this invoice as well. Similar to our ship orders tab, to add the item to the invoice, we simply click the checkbox, which will then prompt us with some questions. Typically, the value for the number of items ordered and the number of items to move from inventory will be one and the same. If you wish to indicate to your customer that additional shipments of this good are incoming, you may wish to make the quantity ordered higher than the quantity you are removing from inventory. This will create a back order on the invoice report. Once again, 
As soon as it's added, I'm free to edit this line and I can change the customer's PO information, our description, as well as the price for each good. If at any time I make a mistake here, I am free to right click on the line and select remove. You'll see I can remove any of these lines that we've added thus far to the invoice. All right, so far we've added some lines to this invoice to represent shipments based on open jobs, and we've also added some stuff from inventory. Lastly, we also have the ability on our invoice to simply hand type in invoice lines. If we go this route, there is no tracking of the goods, nor is this line synced with our inventory. However, if there are extra charges we need to delineate clearly, or we need to tie a specific item to a PO from our customer, we can always add those lines as we see fit. For the sake of convenience, we often call these invoice lines free form invoice lines. Since they aren't specifically related to finished parts from any job, nor are they involved with the contents of our inventory. I'm going to take a second here to add a line that represents a finishing service I did on one of the parts for the customer. I've warned them about this charge and I just want to make sure it appears on my invoice. If I'm ready to process this invoice, I can click the Commit Inventory button. Now for invoice lines that are associated with jobs, we'll get another visit to our Packing List Inventory Select interface. We saw that earlier when we were processing an invoice for just a single job. Just like last time, the top half of the screen asks us to pull specific lots from inventory, whereas the bottom half of the interface will update the shipment schedules for the job in question. For items that we're pulling from inventory, we will see the Commit Inventory to Invoice interface. We are presented with a list of the various lots of this good sitting in inventory, and we are asked which units we want to pull from inventory. No interface will pop up to confirm our free form invoice lines. Once committed, we are ready to print our packing list and invoice reports and ship the goods to our customer. Let's imagine a scenario where, after I've committed my inventory and I'm preparing my shipment, I find out some physical inventory has gone missing and I need to ship my customers less units than I had committed. This process would be the same if I wanted to ship more. I'm just using this as an example. I know I need to adjust my Realtrack invoice. What do I need to do? The good news is I've already showed off the basics of this process. I'm still free at this point to right click on any invoice line and now I have two choices. I can delete the line altogether, or I can adjust the quantities for that line. If I delete a line associated with a job, the Realtrack ERP system will return the items to the Realtrack inventory, and it will also adjust the back order and quantity available values in the job order entry screen associated with the job. It is important to note that when we're deleting a line associated with a job, the user will have to return to the Ship Schedule tab for that job and manually adjust the shipment schedule for the job. We don't do this automatically since Realtrack will update the shipment schedule for you automatically, but you're also free to update it yourself at any time, changing the dates, quantities, and or frequency of shipments. We don't want to destroy any data that the user has intentionally entered so when doing a delete, we rely on the user to update the shipment schedule appropriately themselves. Let's take a look at what happens when I adjust the quantities associated with an invoice line. You'll note that when I let Realtrack know I wish to alter the quantity associated with an invoice line, it pops up a window and asks me to provide the new shipping quantity. Depending on the circumstances, the user may adjust this number lower or higher. After we let the system know the quantity, you'll note that we're again presented with our Packing List Inventory Select screen. You as the user may ask, why am I being shown the screen again? I already filled this information out the first time. When you adjust the quantities in Realtrack, think of it like you've picked all the items off of your shelf, and when you begin the adjustment process, you're putting all the items you originally picked back on the shelf. So let's say we initially pulled 50 units from the shelf, and we want to adjust it to be 40 or 60 or any other number. 
Real track is in essence putting the 50 pieces back onto the shelf as though you never pulled them off in the first place. And now it's asking you how you want to proceed. After we confirm our inventory and pull and updates to the shipment schedule, we can confirm the shipment of the items and see our invoice is now nicely updated with the latest and greatest information. Let's print off our packing list and invoice and tell our shipping folks to prepare our shipment. Unfortunately, even if we try our best, sometimes mistakes will happen and your shop will encounter a scenario where your customer receives a part with a problem and you may need to generate a credit for the customer. So let's pretend my customer for this invoice gives me a call and lets me know two units have issues and I need to issue them a credit memo, reimbursing them for the expenses of two units. In order to begin the credit memo process, we need to pull up the initial Realtrek invoice that shipped the parts to the customer. Thankfully, I happen to have such an invoice already pulled up. From the invoice, I'm going to navigate over to the Create Invoice Credit button and click Away. The Realtrack system provides us a new invoice that has some subtle changes since this is a credit memo and not an actual invoice. To make it easy to visually distinguish if you're looking at an invoice or a credit memo, you'll see the background color of the invoice screen goes to this burnt orange color. On this interface, we can see the column that used to read quantity to ship now reads quantity to return. So we'll need to update this number to reflect the number of units we're providing the credit for. For this example, we'll do two units. Realtrack will automatically calculate the credit based on the prices from the original invoice, though we are free to adjust the price each or add additional miscellaneous credits to the customer if we so choose. Similar to an invoice, it's just as important to commit the credit memo in the Realtrack system. When we click the Commit Inventory button, you'll see our Credit Memo Confirmation interface pop up. This interface has a few cool features. First, we're able to designate where we will be storing the return pieces. We may or may not wish to store these pieces along with the other pieces from the same lot. So for example, if we needed to test the items when they came back, I may wish to make the location be test branch rather than a shelf number or a row. In addition, we are able to assign a specific item status for these pieces being returned. If we mark the pieces with a specific status, then instead of returning these units back to the same lot in inventory, we will create a new lot in inventory based on the status we provide here. What does this mean? Well, in effect, if our user is telling us the pieces we ship them are unusable, need rework, or possibly need additional inspection, we'll be able to flag these pieces coming back with these various status conditions. Instead of just lumping these special pieces back in with whatever we already have in inventory from the production run, these pieces will now stand out and will be ready for further processing based on your internal workflows. We can check on the inventory and make sure it landed there appropriately in a second, but first we'll just print off our credit memo for our customer by clicking on the report button, selecting our report and printing it off. All right. So that's the process to print out a credit memo. Let's take a quick journey into our inventory and make sure the return pieces are where we expect. Since we changed the status of the pieces coming back to us, when they are returned to the Realtrack inventory, you will see that we created a new lot or a new line here in inventory. If we double click on this line, it will pop us over to the Adjust Inventory tab where we can look at the item status to see that the system did indeed save the status on my return parts. If for some reason I wanted to scrap these parts, I always have the option now of deleting this inventory altogether from my Realtrack system. All right, we've covered a bunch of ground today, made some new parts, shipped some goods out, handled a credit memo and a customer return. Thank you very much for your time. As always, please reach out to your Realtrack sales rep or call our main line if you need any assistance or have any questions. Thank you very much. Have a great day.